Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. We do the deep dive and the due diligence on the blockchain projects and platforms that matter because we aim to be the most reliable source of intellectual discourse and insight that inform, educate, and bridge the gap between the blockchain industry and the mainstream. Welcome to this episode of Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into the topics we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm your Editor-in-Chief, Angie Lau. Today, we're talking about CBDC. What's that? Central Bank Digital Currency. And from Beijing to London, the world's top central bankers are exploring, if not already working on, the need for a digital alternative to fiat currency, aka cash money. We sit down with Professor Hu Ziguo. He is Fuji Bank and Heller Professor at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. It is a fascinating and candid look into PBOC's plans in China. Here it is. C CBDC, that's a central bank digital currency. Okay. That term is used everywhere, like widely accepted by the Fed, etc. A lot of central banks are thinking about it. Yes. The reason fundamental economics behind it is that they understand there's a lot of a good part of having a digitalized assets where you can trace where you're coming from, where you go, and make the settlement super quick. Okay. Uh, it, it, to some extent, you can think about it just we, WeChat or Alipay. It's, it's very similar. So the PBOC is drafting the white paper right now. Yeah, what they're working the, on it already. The, yes, mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. in terms of what the the high level themes are, yeah. the thinking, yeah. what, what what do you know of it? Oh, I I know how how we'll do it. Okay, how will, how will the PBOC <laughs> I mean, do I, it? I would think, I, 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 when I say I know how they do it, I know, I, I meant like uh, in terms of the implementation, the like a little bit technical side of it. The, the, the fundamentally, you would think that it's actually not that hard to do. Yeah. It's because it's basically a centralized big database. Uh, because it's, you know, my colleague at the University of Chicago, they will, like, every single time I said, like, this is CBDC, they will immediately tell me it's not blockchain, which I actually agree. Mm -hmm. uh, blockchain, the essence will be multi party maintaining, you know. Everybody come in to check for right. You, decentralized. Right? decentralized. It's not going to be decentralized. It's going to be very is centralized. CB, yes. right? Central bank. <laughs> bank. Okay. It's a huge database using the hash function, blockchain tech, blockchain technology. That uh, that a chain technology. That yes. that's it. There's no uh, There's no distributed ledger part of it. So what is what is going to be baked into the digital asset from the PBOC? How would it ah. technically function oh it's very simple okay it's just you know think about it this is why that i think that the money monetary economics is a very deep part of economics money is something that everybody touch but i do normal people will not understand what's going on yeah. behind the money in some sense the central bank every country is doing is just an accounting system mm -hmm. there's nothing you know when you think about it what is this, this piece of paper really represents mm -hmm. It means that you can use it to pay your tax. Mm -hmm. That's the fundamental reason that people think this is a useful. Like, but you, you know, you often say, "Okay, that that piece of paper is useful because other people accept it." But you're gonna ask, "Why other people accept it?" And then you're gonna go to the, 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 the next round. In the end, it's because government is saying that this is the thing that could be useful to pay back me. So this this is the so-called fiscal theory of monetary economic all these things. Why I want to mention it? I'm saying that it's very simple to create something called digital or cash. There's no difference, like paper-based cash. Think about it. You must have a lot of deposits. Mm -hmm. okay. Most of the deposits or in your mind of wealth is some number recorded as somewhere. Right. That's it. Right. So as long as a central bank has a technology, convince everybody that the number they recorded is correct and frankly you're going to be happy about it and frankly the chinese population has already been Indeed. functioning like that this way for the past decade yes 
That's fintech technology. Yes, yes. Uh, we hear stories indeed, of indeed. even in the you're, street, you're, you're you know, really we, um, beggars. Beggars are getting <laughs> WeChat payments, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. So, but there, there's a, some technology difference. Is that it, with the WeChat, these these uh, these digital assets, right? It's still at the current WeChat technology. You cannot bring all these banks together to do the, the real time real time settlement. The ineffi- it's still inefficient system, yeah, yeah, yeah. which brings us to what a central bank backed yeah. Yeah. digital asset is yeah. going to. So. So the PBOC, they're going to issue a digital asset. Okay, yeah. so you're, so suddenly... Think about it. CBDC do not even to issue, like they don't need to back things. They just, as if that is, suppose today I have a circulation of cat, paper-based cash. Let's you say, switch it to digital yes, currency. Yeah, that's, that's the way... As an outsider, <laughs> do I have to purchase the digital in- currency to participate well, in the economy you, in Well, you use your... Your 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 cash to purchase that thing. That's fine. So I use my cash, my fiat, yeah. Yeah. U.S. dollars, Hong They're Kong gonna dollars. They're going to tear it out. I'm going to use my euro, mm-hmm. and then yeah. I'm going to give trade it that to cash. that. It's this digital it, all currency. Of a sudden, but suddenly, I am within the eco, the domestic ecosystem. If I want to take it out, it's still in the system, yes. right? Yes. Can I take it out? No. Can I take it out of no, country? No, 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 no. no. So you are touching on another important t- okay. point capital that a Libra, Libra is trying to do. Yes, right. but the capital control, etc. But let's yeah. just think about like, what C- CBDC, uh, the, the PBOC is trying to in- implement the CBDC thing. The implementation is very simple. That's the why that they have been working on it for, I think, like uh, four years now? A few years, yes. Four. Four years. Four years. Four so they've years. been doing it for many years. It's, you, you need to be careful because it's so huge. Yes. It's a big impact. Yes. I, in, in some sense, it's very easy to think about it. Implementation is hard. The, uh, uh, the benefit, will, uh, the, the way you do it, as I explained, the cash becomes a digital part. Once you become a digital part, you have a digital signature there so that you can send and be recorded on the chain. Okay. Why they? Why I want to mention it is because think about it. Suppose that the people, a lot of a lot of a blockchain developers would like to, you know, innovate on that chain. They, they don't need to have their own coin then, using that thing. So anybody who could uh, you know innovate on the business ideas is saying you know, today I'm gonna having a much better idea of sharing. My service on my nannies. That, let's say that that's a bad idea. I'm not sure it's a good idea sharing nannies, but sharing something, right? Come up with a, a this idea, develop it, and then you might say, okay, you need an incentive. Okay, incentive we just to pay the digital pay, asset. Pay that thing, yeah. So instead of your own cryptocurrency, yeah, create a you currency. tap into that currency. Yeah. But you're still developing smart contracts. You're yes. still developing your own chain, yeah. your yes. own yeah. ecosystem that then floods yes. into. Yes. And that brings us back to your role as an economist, uh, being a student of economy uh, mm-hmm. and you know, understanding the fabric of China. Yeah. How does this help China internationalize its RMB? How does this help China with shadow banking or it's it's Mm -hmm. debt pile (laughs) how you know these are the things economically that china is very specific about that's why the pboc exists that's why we see the clampdown in icos because there is 1.4 billion people and the economy that needs to be healthy for china how is the pboc going to achieve all of those things with a central bank backed digital asset in a way that um, so i'm a, i'm a macro economist mm-hmm. uh, with the finance side of it i'm also having several uh, papers on financial market uh, in, um, a reform on china uh, the debt problem obviously is one thing i do like just you know people like to link things together or conspiracy type of ideas i when when the CBDC PBOC is trying to work on that part, I know as a fact that, that they were not thinking that far. That what you're talking about. However, I do think it has positive effect on that. So mm-hmm. let me just yeah. explain mm-hmm. that uh, I think the current uh, 
uh, China, China, China's economic engine. Or we, my wishful thinking is to not to coming from the big bank debt like uh, that we what we did uh, ten years ago. It's like you know local government infrastructure investment like big things. Uh, they did already. China spent the world out of the yes. global financial crisis. I, I have a paper on that. China. <laughs> I, I, yes, everybody I, knew it. <laughs> I've been reporting on the story. It feels like for ten years, but I have. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is what's we, happened. But also now China is paying the price exactly. of rescuing the global economy exactly. right now. Exactly. But we don't get the reward. I mean, we we. I mean, when I say we, I, I am a I am a Chinese citizen. I I. I think that a lot of times the Chinese uh, economic policies, a lot of times doing some unintended uh, good things to the to the world, but uh, get a very very bad unintended consequences yes. that only bought by us. So it's related to this debt problem and all these things. I think the ultimate economic engine that are very healthy, like compared to U.S., is consumption. Mm -hmm. I see good trend. I see really, really good trend in the past five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? How is it related to CBDC, blockchain, all these things? Is that we need we need really, really fundamental innovations on the you know small consumer based business models. Okay, and one of them, and I really think blockchain could help, is on this trade finance. When I say trade finance, it's basically like small entrepreneurs, all these things. They want to do business, but often the time we know that doing business need a, you know, interim financing. But in a world where the law system, infrastructure, all these things were still lagging behind quite a bit, if you have a blockchain that type of tech technology bring the transparency and the cross validating into it, that will help the working quite a bit. And also help the banking system to to invest in some you know profitable projects. Economically, China has been experimenting with a lot of these techniques. So, is it uh, um, you know injecting dollars to state-owned companies that then trickle down? IB, IB. Right? <laughs> yes, injecting oh, oh, exactly. money. Exactly, injecting RB. <laughs> yes. That's I right. know, I know you, when you right. say dollars, you mean the I money. Mean money, <laughs> injecting RMB into state-owned yes. agencies, yes. corporations, that then hopefully trickle down to SMEs, small, medium-sized businesses, yes. which did not happen. And so then there was a conflict there. And then shifting policy and encouraging banks to inject RMB and support local businesses, you know, all of these things. It's almost like playing whack-a-mole. Once, <laughs> once you address a problem, another problem yeah. comes up. Yeah. How does this, how does a PBOC digital asset mm -hmm. smooth Could it help? the no. policies? Mm -hmm. Can it? Can it help? Okay, so first of all, let me just clarify. I personally do not think in the sense that it's uh, totally ineffective. Yeah. The, the the trickling down. Yeah. You know that uh, the reason that uh, the, so let me give you one example. You could have a negative side or positive side. There's a housing sector yeah. uh, in, 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 in China. The biggest economic engine, I mean, in terms of not only the uh, housing wealth, et cetera, that's a separate thing, but a uh, lot of, uh, you know, uh, wage income, uh, all these like, uh, improve of uh, living standards and also you know feel wealthy goes to the tourism or etc yeah. those like it improve the living quality is thanks to the housing sector because the housing sector is so important that it bring up all the industries up mm. you need to make the house better no right yes. you need to op install those Americans lights are very familiar uh, with these concept. things right and that's really the biggest multiplier to the economy so I, I do not agree with you saying that, oh, initially we pump into the small, uh, this small, uh, these SOEs and then stop there. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Just because of the nature of the housing sector, which is the biggest investment in the past, past 10 years, is, is on this, this So effect. central bank's role is very much um, 
creating, uh, you know, the, the business cycle of a natural economy yeah. and minimizing that. Mm -hmm. So we often hear hard lending, soft lending, mm. lending. Every central bank wants a soft lending. Soft lending, right? yeah. Uh, whether they ever want it, a lending. Uh, yeah, they, and, and technically they don't <laughs> ever want a lending. And that, mm -hmm. in a sense, is a, a fundamental economic problem because yeah. at some point the cycle must move yes, naturally. Yes, yes. That's one way. Mm -hmm. And so what central banks do, not just the PBOC, but uh, the ECB and you Fed. know the Fed, um, they use monetary policies to yes. shift the gear yes. on the economy. Yeah. How does a digital asset mm -hmm. help bake in, I guess, mm -hmm. this policy? Like how would good. a central bank good question. be yeah. able to do that? So let me just uh, also just a little bit continuation of it because that's the answer is also to your question mm -hmm. is that the, like, there are two parts of it, right? The, 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 this, uh, uh, CBDC I introduction. I was hoping that you know at least you could uh, um, uh, kind of uh, jumpstart the or help quite a bit on this chain um, application to this trade of finance, small SM SME transaction, etc. Okay, that's the part that the kind of a real, yeah. real, right? That's real. The other side of it, it's kind of monetary policy, yes. that you were saying. So you know that actually it's linked to a another. Um, uh, advocates for the CBDC in the Western world is on um, the the fact that the people realize that the, the uh, negative the, the traditional uh, monetary policy just lose its uh, its 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 its, uh, its 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 power. Its effectiveness. Its effectiveness We're because in of negative the negative yield right now. Yeah, because of negative yield. Yeah. But do you understand why the negative yield is there's a bound? Just because of cash. The presence of a cash makes that a negative yield not possible. Think about the case. Suppose I'm telling you your, your yield become minus 10%. Okay, what you're gonna do is to take the money out from mm -hmm. the from the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. which means that just the effective interest rate is still kind of a zero or that right. way. If everything in the end is no cash monetary policy could be way more effective. They could put, put like minus 50. So that's the one, the biggest advocates of the Western central banks that they would like to experiment this digital currency. This is CBDC, the central bank. Help me so, understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, minus 50 yield yeah. is possible with digital currency it's possible because it's just accounting so think about it that you know in the end in the world yes. where we do not have cash yes okay suppose you're living you know, yes yeah and then then there's no cash which means that all your money is written in the central bank's account you have an account there with some money there let's say five hundred dollars hong kong dollars the central bank can have a monetary policy saying that starting from now on, every day or every year, the, the interest rate is, is minus 50%. What are you going to do? That's minus 50%. Okay. All right. Yes. That and does not as sound a result, like a good thing. No, no, no. Yeah, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing in the sense that the point of negative interest rate is mm -hmm. to push you to spend. Mm -hmm. If you spend, you you pay some else money. So you're the saying other pay it creates more money. a deflationary aspect to the average person having wealth that they want to buy things yes. in so doing triggering. That's exactly and monetary an inflationary yeah. effect. Pushing up back. the transaction, make every products being sold, etc. Prosperous. That's exactly what the monetary policy is doing. There's nothing mysterious. It's just that initially we have a monetary policy that you know five, you know, natural rate is five percent. You don't want to participate <laughs> in that. What if I want to independently say I don't necessarily? So but what am I going to do? I'm going to. I guess I'll go think into about different it. If assets, everybody right? else, everybody, their wealth shrink by let's say same rate. You don't care. 
the classic accounting <laughs> principle of balancing your books. How does that? Is that? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just because it's just the accounting. You know, it's just the the uh, the, the the wealth from today to tomorrow. Yes. But you think about it, like it's, it's just the, the way that the, the central banks are stimulating economy. Central banks, the way that the central banks would like to stimulate the economy is to control, uh, let me not to use the word control. It's basically to encourage people to either spend or invest. So now I kind of understand <laughs> the policy yeah. that exists out of China. Because if this is ultimately the goal, right? Mining doesn't make any sense because mining actually creates liquidity outside the system. So that mm. is an industry that doesn't make sense for this policy goal. I think, um, I mean, there's a, the, these are very different things. I mean, it's the, uh, the CBDC itself, uh, you don't need to mine, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the that's part of the. So why would so, exactly? So so is I mean I guess I'm trying to understand yeah. why the Chinese government would shut down mining. They shut down cryptocurrency. They shut down cryptocurrency. Yes. So even mining, you know, it's part of support outside cryptocurrency. <laughs> um, I would, uh, I, I think. Um, this logic has its own truth in the sense that uh, you know uh, a typically a central bank would not would like to have a payment system outside the central bank itself. So that's that's a very ch typical. It's not but just that has China. Nothing. Yes, it's exactly. Europe, Europe talks yes. about it in the exact same way America exactly. talks about it. In exactly. The exact and often the time the the. The reason or excuse they quote is on privacy, on anti-money laundering, KYC, KYC AML, et cetera. Yeah, that's that's always there. Drugs, but I yeah. do not think that's so much connected. You know, and this is the, I, I I I firmly believe. I do not think it's so much connected to monetary policy. Mm. Monetary policy that you were talking mm -hmm, about yes. is just you asking me a question: What's good about the CBDC? Mm -hmm. I'm saying you know, on the monetary policy side, brings more more flexibility. Yes. To the central banks. So that actually helps yes. at the ultimate goal, which yeah. is the internationalization yes. of the RMB. Yes. Right? Because yes. if you can capital control your domestic economy of 1.4 billion people, that's a lot of, you know, you want, you want to, capital flight is not necessarily something that the Chinese government wants. Certainly they not really any want country wants. <laughs> so we've seen the, the financial and the economic and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. policies that have been put in place. So let's get to that point where, okay, you have that, that, that capital control, right? Mm -hmm. So you have that pot of wealth that you can now get to your next goal of internationalizing the RMB. How, mm -hmm. help me get mm -hmm. there and understand for our that, audience. Yes, yes. Uh, I would think that How, that makes it- It makes a stronger, uh, an easier path to internationalization. I would say help a little bit, but it doesn't mm. solve the fundamental issue. What's the fundamental issue? Fundamental issue is people do not uh, worry that uh, there's some capital control. Mm. And that's, you know, once they have the CBDC, they can easily control it. Mm -hmm. right? So that doesn't solve the core problem that you want to control mm. the flow. Mm. Um, it's making it e things easier to control. So in that sense, it's a negative side. Of the of the international inter, internationalization of the RMB, mm -hmm. um, I, I I could stay in here talk so long about the internation <laughs> of RMB, but yeah. uh, I do not think that uh, this type of innovation will will do anything. Got it. Okay. Will have any effect? If anything, probably is a negative side because once you have this book where you can basically you can program. Yeah. And then that just, you know, even, even People those... People are incentivized in a different way. Yeah. When Facebook announced Libra Project, yes. Yes. what was China's response? Uh, so it's so interesting to me that, uh, you know, when you say China, you, you could say Beijing or these cryptocurrency people. I see way more analysis of a Libra. I, at that time, I was at the, this Lohan Academy meeting 
uh, this is the Alibaba. Yeah. Uh, this is about these things, and uh, and I realize I I I have a f- friend circle like Peng Yu Chuan, friend circle on this side, that side, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. The articles or the comments mm-hmm. coming from the China side is way more than the U.S. side. Mm. Why? What was, it? what was it? What What was the oh the, the reason the context the tone were they supportive the, they were supportive. Supposedly, so for obvious reasons, because yeah. saying that look, you know, they are doing true innovation, and if you if if the Beijing is still kind of like not to allow us to innovate, we are lagging behind. The next two hundred years, we are back into the opium war, etc. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. these 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 type of tones. Yeah. I think they're they're they're. And biased. on the Beijing side, what was the what was the Beijing gets. Uh, Gets uh, I, I, let me find the right word. I know a bit uneasy. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly they do that. Uh, they would they don't want to see. Think about it. They took three years ago yeah. that that uh, bureau that that former regulator was asking me. Yes. Right. Uh, they don't want to lagging behind the frontier yeah. or the technology. But all of a sudden, there's a uh, brand new idea and also seems to be getting support from other parts not just yeah. these crypto chinese crypto people yeah. also on the u.s side so they worry that it's indeed that we we need to catch that on this do is you Beijing. think that that actually is helping now the projects that are in china and the teams and the cryptocurrency quite a bit. yeah Help quite a bit so china is starting to turn around and go you know what we gotta we gotta help these guys is that the sentiment i Think not that yet. Not that so yet. I, I, you know, I was careful in choosing the word. You were asking me, does it help in a little bit? I would say yes, it will help a, help a bit. I, I see. Oh, it's no, no, still, clearly, it's no, no. It changes. I think Beijing is hoping Hong Kong is to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. So and so uh, let the innovation happen in Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. Very clear. But then bring. Let let the experiment happen. There's and a then lot of do good best practices once that has been determined. Right? That's a little bit unfair. I mean, like okay. there's a lot of innovation and practice on the chain we side. That. We know that on the chain side in England, in in, in, in the mainland, in the mainland, in we the know mainland. That. We but know you that. don't. We do like again. I do not think as economists that we can separate these payment from the from the business model. Um, and the payment or the exchanges, or crypto asset, cryptocurrency, investing, etc., is on the on the on the Hong Kong side. Yeah. But the chain innovation of these trade finance I was explaining to you, all these things is, um, is it, basically the supply chain. You must yeah. have heard of the supply chain finance, yes, all these things. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of lot of projects in yes. China, in China. Yeah. and that it's also they got also see. get help by having the labor. The Libra is kind of like uh, having, they will have a, a very important uh, technology um, pro- um, progress. Uh, instead of mining, they are not doing mining. They're doing proof of stake. Mm. That's another algorithm. And if they make it work, then people can learn from it. Yeah. So, so that in that sense, it's, uh, I, I, I really like Libra uh, project. I do have a lot of concern about it, but I think uh, I would say I will vote yes for that. Not only because it brings to the convenience to the u- users, but also there's some uh, technology uh, progress. For a global that. audience who's unclear mm-hmm. about what's happening in China, mm-hmm. how would you compare China to the European market, to the American market when it comes to blockchain projects, innovation, and talent. Ah, the, the the advantage of China is the is the application scenarios. So we need it, and it has a market, and uh, more importantly, have the government support. Let me just go one by one. We need it. As I said, there's a lot of uh, legal issues in China that uh, um, fraud. And blockchain is designed to address that. Second um, is, oh, third, let me talk about the third first. The third is about the government uh, in, 
um, um, you know, support. One thing that I feel strong on the application of the blockchain is that the blockchain is super, very relevant, but useful for the scenario where you have, where you have a multi-party participation, mm. multi-party cooperation, mm. and commonly they, they 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 maintain the share of the database. Uh, and often the time that uh, you have different heterogeneous power within this part part mem these these yeah. members in the yeah. thing. So, and at that time you need a blockchain to set the rules. Everyone yeah. abide to it. This is a really good. However, for people to come in together, to hang in together, agree on certain rules, you need a coordination. Consensus. Yes. Coordination mm -hmm. is Government could play some role with well intended you know, <laughs> of, of, of ideas, etc. So one one example I know that a, a Tianjin port, yeah. Tianjin port is yeah. initiating some kind of a trade finance project. Yeah. That, that I, I have high hope about that. Yes. So there's the one thing and the second then then we need it, government support and also that uh, um, there's a lot of uh, talents yeah. that that, uh, that it was uh, uh, working on, working on these type of th things, and I think that uh, um, people, I, I I knew how much they pay. They're well paid, so uh, you have the right incentive. The incentive <laughs> is there. Yeah. What do we see with uh, oh, so this compared to the in China next year, one year from now? What where do you think we're going to to be? Ah. Oh. That's very hard to do the prediction. You know, economists typically don't do the predictions, uh, but it's not like stock market of predictions, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, I think um, the I was personally was hoping is that they could get a, a more a well functioning user case on the so called trade finance. Mm. Uh, and on the Hong Kong side, I hope that you know. The regulations, regulatory parts can can chase to the trend and uh, quickly to embrace the the possibility of of acknowledging the existence of these these things. I, I want to mention one thing is that the, uh, the U.S. regulations they tip they given the nature of the of the of the economy is like a market driven. They typically will not ban it. Like unless there's a clear case that uh, some some group of uh, uh, people gets hurt, then they have to do some action. Yes. Uh, otherwise, just you know, you're gonna do it. You know, let me let me watch and let on. However, uh, when where you, when you get to the Facebook, mm -hmm. um, because the Facebook doesn't have good history. <laughs> yes. In these type of it's things. It's got a marketing issue. Yes. <laughs> Great public relations yes, issues. He's got a public relations <laughs> issue. And uh, uh, the seems like the the atmosphere goes to turn the others other way. Um, usually it's fine, but it's the it's the fact that you know it's these regulators or uh, the, uh, they I don't think they are so incentivized to really figure out what's going on. I want to mention the difference between U.S. and China in this case. Mm. I mentioned that that uh, former lead, former regulators from Beijing, he's retired, mm. okay. but he still takes time to come into me and talk to a lot of people, saying, learn. "What is the state? I want to know." Learn about blockchain. Learn yeah. about cryptocurrency. Yeah. Yes, yes. I never will think about it, like what that will be happening in U.S. So in a way, it's like you know, regulators also need to learn clearly. You know, if they don't learn anything, then it's all jargon words, and everything you say sounds like all all the same. <laughs> and how do you address that? How do you address that? All these things. So in in that way, I feel that's the difference. And I hope that if if there's a, a very concrete application, healthy ones, mm -hmm. good ones, that uh, economists will see, ha. Huh, this is something not just to benefit you, but benefit the world. Uh, I think the China has a chance on this type of applications. What a incredible insight 
okay. into blockchain in China. Okay. Thank you for your expertise. Thank you. Thank you for your candidness. Yes. And I know I learned a lot, including okay. our audience. Okay. Thank you Great. so much, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Angie.